previously on All right. Board. We are uh, very happy to... Uh, we're just trying to figure out when's the last time uh, we spoke to him. And uh, I think the last time was when we actually did a little... Uh, we, we were recording all these inserts uh, for TV, for Supersport. Um, on, uh, I think it was called uh, Whatever Happened To. Mm-hmm. Or Where Are, where are They, they now? now? Yeah. <laughs> And funny enough, uh, the other guy that we're going to be chatting to today as well, Paul Nash, was on the same series uh, as part of our two uh, top, top quality international world-beating athletes. The other one, Marcello Fiascanaro, who is here with us today. Nice to see you again, March. How's it, Darren? Nice very, to be here. Very, very good to see you. And uh, looking in good health now. I mean, how many? How old are you these days? So, so uh, next birthday, I'll be 64. 64. So, yeah, eh? but I'm 63. And... Um, the health is not that great, but it's... Uh, what do you mean? No, no, I'm fine. I'm oh, okay. Fine. Just normal <laughs> old age. <laughs> yeah. Normal age. Yeah, normal a little bit, a little bit porky, yeah. No, gee, oh, come on. Uh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's porky and uh, that's all relative. <laughs> but it's nice to see you again. What are you getting up to these days? What do you do? I'm still with Adidas. Wow. Uh, how many years now? Well, that's decades. 33 now. Oh. 33, but I'm slowing down. I think I'll be finishing next year. Yeah. Uh, still a great brand. Had a great career with him. And uh, I've... My sports scene is now golf. I'm <laughs> cuckoo about golf, and I'm still shocking, but I did break 80 for the first time two weeks ago. Wow, of what handicap? Of an 18, and I'm a 16. Yeah, what? No. You broke 80? Yeah, no, oh, my word. Where do you what? play? You should be shot. At uh, CCJ now. Just uh, They've got a pensioners rate. Which <laughs> oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, uh, I'm in there. And uh, what place is that? Uh, Joburg Country, Country oh, Club. Oh, beautiful. Lovely, lovely, lovely two, co- me. two courses, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, when you're 63, you can get a good rate, yeah. John, if you can become a pensioner, which isn't far away, <laughs> stay away from golf courses. That restraining order doesn't expire when you go okay, on pension. Okay, okay. Yeah. So what did the guy say when you walked into the clubhouse having shot under 80 off an 18 handicap? I was lucky. It was at Sabi, a little bit of a, a shorter course, and there was not a soul in the bar. In, in the bar. I played with some two other guests. So that was wonderful. My other scores were 87, 88, and 94. So oh, okay. You actually broke 80, so you shot 70 what? Fir- 79. Net 61. Yep. Yo, yo, yo. You'd be yep. in trouble. Lucky it wasn't yep. a golf day. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. All right. Now, I was just checking where you played. So, because Simon will be very nervous if you start playing like that at the Wanderers. <laughs> it's impossible to shoot that at the Wanderers. Yeah. Off an 18. No way. No, so, it'll no. eat you alive. No. <laughs> um, now, just in case we have uh, people from Simon's era and, and younger who might not will be sitting here wondering, who is Mar- March or Marcello Fiascanaro? Uh, tell us the, uh, I mean, your, 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 your pinnacle of your career was breaking the world 800 uh, record? Uh, well, 400 indoors in 1972, but the, the big race was uh, 1973, the world record versus Czechoslovakia in Milano, 1 minute 43,7. Yeah. And just blowing my own trumpet, which I hate doing, Go would have it. come seventh in that <laughs> incredible race with David Rudisha in the Olympic final. Wow, and they were talking about him. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, no, he was the good star of this it's Olympic great, Games. Yeah. I think it was a performance, including Bolt, who is great, but mm. I think that was the performance of the Games. Yeah, that was. And uh, yeah. I think some, some of the commentators actually said that. He yeah, was unbelievable. Yeah, incredible. Now, who were the guys in that era? Did you, who, 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 was the uh, New Zealander, jo- was it John oh, Walker? No, I was, we started, I, I raced against John Walker, but mm. he, he was more of a 1,500-meter runner. So I raced him once in the 800. Uh, I beat him, I have to say. But uh, the, the good 800 runners in the world then were a guy called Dave Wattle, uh-huh. who ran with that cap. He won the Olympics mm-hmm, in, in, mm-hmm. in Munich. And a guy called Ricky Waluda from the States. But probably the best 800 meter runners in the world were Dickie Broberg and Donnie Milan. I remember they used to have and big And Fanny Fonso. Well. And uh, they were all three in South Africa. And yeah. I was, okay, South African strike Italian. So it was just um, a, a great pity that uh, mm. you know, only I could really run internationally because they and I said on some other TV thing a few weeks ago that had it be, had we all run as South Africans there would have been two medals because we, we just sort of ran well together yeah. so yeah so uh, but you were living in South Africa at the living time South but Africa, you could yeah. run for Italy yeah. so that was my old man was a prisoner of war and when all the prisoners went back after after the war. He was he was in hospital here, yeah, so mm. he only went back four months later. In that time, 
Yeah. You'd love to have a go. Did you ever see a picture of March in those days? Or John Walker for that matter, yes. or any of those guys? Maz, try and find one if you just uh, Google or go onto images for and put one up so people can have a look. Because they all, in those days, all your, especially your middle distance athletes, all looked like porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> you all had the big hang moustaches and those long flowing hairs. That's apparently out here, that's what porn stars looked like in those days. Yeah, we tried to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we tried to fit in. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you see yes. them? There's I'm a, looking at one right yeah. now. Yeah, Maz will put one up on, uh, on the website it's or on Facebook. It's quite steamy. Huh? Uh, yeah. I see. And, and How they, the mighty have fallen. Yeah, and I mean, in those days, also, if you look at people running in shorts, like only John still runs in shorts like that. No, they're not. Because they were the tiniest shorts. little yeah, yeah, silk uh, little shorts that you used to wear. Like, yeah, I, well, yeah. You, you know, I ran with those in Australia, Darren, and I got so many people looking me up and down. And were they the pink ones that you normally run with? The pink ones yeah. and then the, the black ones, and I got so many stares, and it was almost like I thought I was going to get arrested because they all wore board shorts. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, it's weird, eh? Yeah. But, but now they're running in tights. Yeah, now yes. it's, yeah, now it's yeah. 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 All right, Johnny. Sorry. We're talking about athletics. <laughs> 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 and uh, I mean, do you still do you still train? Do you still do no, a I, bit yeah, of jogging? I had a lot of yeah. My problem. I had a very quick career from basically 1970 to 1974 were my good years. And but I used to run the South African summer and then the Italian summer and then mm. used to go run indoors in America. So I, I never had a, a winter. I, I still. You know, uh, run for both countries, so to speak, in both countries in the summer. So I had a te Achilles tendonitis problems and stress fractures. So um, I can't, well, I can run, but I mean, it's pathetic. So I just, as I say, my sports is down to a bit of gym and golf now. Yeah. All right. And you basically, when you finished, uh, when you finished running, you, you joined Adidas or you joined uh, while you were still running? No, no. Well, they sponsored me. Okay. And then when I came, because I went to play rugby in Italy after athletics for a couple of years. You played rugby in Italy? Yes, I, I played rugby in Italy. Professional. Can you? Well, it was wow. professional for a long time then. <laughs> that's why Narsen, that's why Narsen, a few, and Campo yeah. used to go. Yeah. 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 Where so did you play? I played at Milano, Concordi Milano in the centre. Okay. But I played rugby before athletics. Oh, really? You, you, what? Yeah. I didn't know that. I didn't, yeah, know, didn't know that. that. Province under 20, we had a great captain, Mona Duplessis was our captain. Serious? <laughs> Darby <laughs> Snyman was my fluff. We had yeah. a good well, you were wing, obviously, or centre? I was centre. Centre? Nelson Babra. I don't know if you remember Louis Babra. Oh, Louis Babra, yeah. Louis Babra's son, and I was centre. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, something it was like a, a complete accident I got into athletics. Yeah. You would have had to play in province because, I mean, if a guy with a surname Fiasco Nara tried to get into the Bulls side. To the Bulls, it's difficult. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. And I don't yeah. like this style. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sorry. Like Sorry, boys. Well, that's yeah. when Nas was starting. No, mind you, you were earlier than that. I was going to say, you would never have seen the ball. You don't like kick and chase. <laughs> no. no, no. <laughs> no we'll see what's happening on Saturday. I just hope that, you know. Yeah. Just, Good I luck mean, to them all, yeah. I'm trying to, and I, I was, look, I mean, when you when you uh, made those amazing achievements, I was uh, not even 10 yet. Yeah. Uh, I, I obviously remember that we didn't have television yet either. That's so right, we, we no got everything yeah. out of the newspapers and I, I still remember the photographs and stuff like that. But uh, you mentioned some of the guys in the in the middle distance running that uh, from, from that era. Yeah. Um, who were the other, I'm trying to think of the sprinters. The South African sprinters, when I was uh, running with Eric Eshman. It was Eric running Eric in those days. The Vince, blonde, yeah, the blonde yeah. uh, with the bald spot in the front. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> That's him. And Andre van Heerden. Uh, there was a guy. Um, Andres Krochman. He was at 5 and 10,000 meter runner. Shame. Yeah. Close, John. no longer with us. Yeah. Close. 100 meters, yeah. 5 and 10,000. Yeah. Close. Yeah, yeah, but that. Krochman was a good one. And Fanny van Sale, I, I mentioned him. And um, he was a, who was the uh, he also a sprinter? He was very good, a black uh, guy. Uh, uh, we used to run with Eric. Hold on, uh, God, yeah, uh, you're quite right. Uh, what is his name? There was not a Ungobeni. There was no. a Ungobeni, uh, Zach, somebody. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'll think of it. I'll try uh, if it comes to It'll me. It'll pop yeah. into yeah. it. And of course, uh, um, and then we had uh, j uh, just after Paul Nash, or in between me and Paul Nash. Not that I ran one and two really, but there was Saki Van Sale. The flying policeman, yes, yeah. they used to call yes. him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, uh, I mean, we had, no, I, I remember another guy from uh, the longer, I think he used to run 3,000 steeples. Uh, also a South African guy ran for England. Uh, it would have been after you, though, I think, in the uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Juli uh, Julian Marseille. Julian Marseille, I knew, mm. well, I knew they were three, but they were a whole family of Marseille. Yeah. All good, really De La Salle good boys, that's how I remember. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, ca good Catholics. <laughs> good Catholic boys. Where's Julian Marseille these days? I have no idea. One of them is... There was Julian and Andrew. Was it Andrew? Andrew I think. And yeah. Andrew. One of them was well, our, were our say, patent yeah. uh, <laughs> attorneys uh, yeah. in, in in Pretoria. And I think one of them is uh, in in America. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure. Try and track.
catch up with him because uh, my late brother and him used to like do battle at school yeah, and yeah. uh you know, actually kept up with him quite well mm. so but he was only south african so he, <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere past de la Salle, i'm afraid <laughs> yeah i mean there's some uh i mean people will say in those days had it not been so the country been the way it was uh, how would we have uh, yeah. Perform. We were talking about some of the soccer players yesterday. We were talking to Charlie Goff. Oh right, yeah. And uh, and Richard Goff. We had a chat to him yeah. as well, and we were just reminiscing about some of those guys who played then <sighs> in the three different leagues that we had. Yeah. And if we had combined those mm. leagues, then how well, well South Africa probably would have done. Well, as a schoolboy, we used to go to Hartleyvale every Friday night. You Cape know, Town City. Cape Town City mm. and Greenpoint for Olympic, and <laughs> the stadiums were were, were full. <laughs> uh, we used to go to Newlands on Saturday afternoons. I mean, yeah. And they were great characters. And Frank Lord was one of the managers. Frank Lord, manager in, of Cape Town City, in, in our time. It? And Richard Allen, Albert Aiden Bogart was a goalie. He was yeah. our hero, you know. Yeah, but uh, I'm now a Pirates fan, and let's hope <laughs> we can come right with Roger Dessau. Yeah, I just saw them. They were playing against somebody there. It was Null All, but I think it was from. Uh, yeah, it was the old game. Yeah. yeah. Um, and is it is it a standard thing that everyone that that because I mean another former sportsman also got a job at Adidas and has been there for young says Gavin Cowley yeah Gavin's and he our also marketing director you yeah. have to have a grey moustache to work there you <laughs> look like Gavin Cowley <laughs> I, I am Gavin Cowley in yes <laughs> <laughs> no uh, yeah, Gavin and I well he started about a year or two after I started and uh, you know you have to be very good looking to to work for Adidas you know, yeah joking, that's, you know. no no that's that's right I think it it. If you were a sportsman, and uh, he was a, a multi-talented in, in cricket and mm. uh, everything, he was a good golfer. Um, Sorry, uh, Marsh, just hang yeah. on a second. Hi, is Paul there, please? Hi, speaking. Hi, Paul. Hello, good Paul. afternoon. Welcome to Balls Radio. How are you doing? Fine, yourself. All right, thanks. Let me good. try and remember now. Parkhurst, Parkview, somewhere around that part of the world? Uh, where I live, you mean? Yes. Um, I'm in Santon. I've been a Bryanston boy for most of my life. Bryanston Santon, okay. Yeah. Well, it's Darren. Uh, we're just actually sitting here with uh, another former great South African athlete. Yeah. Marcello Fiascanaro. You can say hello to him. Hello, Paul. Uh, hi, how are you, Marsh? Very well, thanks. And yourself? Good. I remember all your feats very well. Yeah, and uh, I saw some good photographs of you on that CakeNet program a few, few weeks ago. Did you see it? I did. Yeah, um, very good, yeah. Yeah, it, it was, uh, most of my friends seem to think it went down free reasonably well. Not bad, mm. not yeah. bad. Especially good. my Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, just well, at least I didn't have to speak Swana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were just sitting here uh, reminiscing about, um, you know, some of our athletes going back in uh, those days. And, and March was saying that you guys kind of, where you finished, he was he was just starting, or starting out. And uh, and your your great feat, of course, was uh, going under ten in there. Was it 100 yards, or had it already become 100 meters in those no, days? No, it was 100, 100 meters. 100 was, meters, yeah. Yeah, and I actually equaled it at ten. I actually didn't quite go under, although I was hoping to go under. Did you never run a nine 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 point nine nine? I ran nine nines, but um, not officially allowed, if you know what I mean. Uh, was that but the world record of at that time was ten seconds. So uh, the, was that because of the politics of the day and the fact that it was South Africa? Um, <laughs> It had something to do with that. Yeah. It was <laughs> definitely <laughs> politics. Yeah. Yeah. In those days, it was very confusing. Yeah. 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 All right, and, uh, and I'm still trying to because I mean, last time I think we, we we chatted was when we came to your house to do an interview for uh, television as well. If I'm not mistaken, I think we might have bumped each other once uh, after that. But uh, you, you're an accountant. You're in accounting or le law somewhere around there. No, um, <laughs> I'm actually um, chairman. I was managing director of a public company on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange um, and we do property development. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing that for most of my life and I really enjoy it. All right. And I'm listening to you, Paul. You sound like about 38. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I've obviously put the loudspeaker on to make myself sound strong. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a little bit older than that. Yeah. I was actually at my prime in about 68, 69. Yeah. When I was about 20. Absolutely. Eight, 18, 19, 20. All right. Around there. We uh, we were just reminiscing, and, and uh, obviously you followed athletics since then. And uh, we were trying to remember. Obviously, you're talking about some of the sprinters in the years that came after you. Um, do you, I mean? Do you still remember some of those names? You, Eric Esman was one of them. The you know, especially amongst the men. Uh, not so much you. Uh, not so much the South African chaps. Uh, obviously, I know I followed. You know, obviously South African athletic, athletics mm. and and sport just generally. Um, yeah, I know that obviously the, the world record holders sort of after my time. Um, but unfortunately, uh, South Africa has disappointed me a little bit. I thought we could have done better. 
Yeah, Let, and uh, let's get on to that now because I was going to ask March, but that's why let, we thought let's get you on the phone. I mean, the state of South African athletics uh, at the moment. Uh, I, I, look, I mean, obviously we've had a, a couple of guys that have done well at Olympic Games, but um, I, I would imagine that that is because they compete a lot internationally. Uh, but there's not much really at home for them now, is there, Paul? Well, I, you know, I was, um, you know, just just generally, I thought that the London Athletics Olympics were just fantastic. Yeah, no. best uh, ever, I think. Yeah. yeah, you know, and I really think that you know uh, my swimmers and I rose the, obviously extremely well. Um, in the uh, Paralympics, obviously, uh, Natalie and Oscar did extremely well, and obviously they got the, high, you know, all the publicity and all the rest of it. Um, that's the positive side. On the negative side, I really thought that uh, able athletes, if you can call them that, did very poorly. In track and field, yeah. Yeah, Shocking. absolutely. I mean, everybody seemed to do worse than they expected, mm. and we didn't really go across there, I don't think, uh, with um, a realistic chance of, of getting into any sort of final or, you know, so let alone a goal. They may have been kidding themselves, but I don't actually think that was the case. Well, mm. One of my things, sorry to, uh, no, carry on. Uh, to interrupt, but things that sort of got me was uh, as soon as they didn't uh, qualify for the final or didn't come in, in the top five, for example, they were really talking about, don't worry, in four years' time, I'll be fine. So they're basically saying, guys, you know, I need to be sponsored for the next four years and treated uh, like in kid gloves and what have you. But there was sort of no explanation or shit, guys, I'm sorry, I've, I've let you down. And it was, uh, next time I'll be better in four years' time. And it's... Um, sort of using London as a preparation. Yes. And, and meanwhile, they were favorites to get on the... In the, into the medals yeah. and it's, uh, I don't know and uh, uh, yeah, even I, I, some of I, the great 800 yeah. guys like we've had Sepeng and Mudlausi yeah. uh, okay Mudlausi did win the world championships but they they, they 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 seem to build up to the big games but internationally you don't see them running in these big meetings all the time you know, after the Olympics everybody came home yes. meanwhile there were a whole lot of meetings afterwards where the guys run for personal glory but we Not just to seem seen. to we retreat I don't know uh, when the chips are all down they don't seem to be able that's to that's it, it. And then, but they want to look after a, a contract and I don't even know what the guys are earning in these Olympic if you're an Olympic athlete but they, they're trying to say look after themselves you know, don't drop me now I'll, I'll be much better in, uh, in, in Brazil well, I never, I never actually ever thought four years down the line, ever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We used to get two far. months I maximum. Mean, yeah. I, know, I know our careers are a lot shorter because we have to go and work and things like that, but yeah. you just don't know what's <laughs> going to happen in four years' time. Yeah, exactly. exactly. I uh, mean, it's just you don't think four years' yeah. time. You may think next year, but not beyond yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm afraid this all, comes from, um, this all comes from the administration of athletics, um, yeah. which has been... Up and down, say yeah. it likely has been abominable. Um, the appointees of these people that are running them, I'm afraid, are political. They don't know anything about um, athletics per se. They're not even personal administrators. And I don't want to name names, but I mean, it's the, the, the sort of situation that uh, they are running these meetings and organizing sponsorships and then organizing school teams and all the rest of it, it's just non-existent. Well, if, you, if you're non-existent, then you've got to land up in a situation where every vid, uh, individual has to do it himself. There's no mm. nationalist pride. There's, there's nothing. And that's where I really think the fault lies. Yeah. And unless we get it together, we're going to have the same in four years' time. Well, well, I, I agree think, I think your, your uh, personal assistant is trying to make calls on your line there. <laughs> I, think you're, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, I mean, look, it's, uh, at, at, uh, and it's not, not something new either. It's been like this for a little while. Um, and Athletic seems to have been the worst. Yeah. You know, yeah, the, yeah. the rugby guys seem to have more or less got it together. The cricket guys have more or less got it together. You know, you can argue about nuances and all the rest of it, but just, just athletics is just non-existent. Mm. Swimming is better. Um, you know, and athletics was a reasonably big sport. I just think that um, it doesn't attract anybody anymore because nobody 
gets excited about it anymore. But I think the, the you know the reason why swimming is probably better now because swimming's also been in its own state, and I mean some of our top athletes, have, uh, swimmers, have had a lot to say about the local setup in swimming, even when we were winning medals. But the fact is that they have won medals, yeah. and yeah. there's a few of them, and they've won gold, and they've catapulted the sport into the limelight where Absolutely. you've got some of these people that they can use as ambassadors for the sport. So whereas athletics, I mean you know if it wasn't for guys like Josiah Tugwani and <laughs> and uh, you know Ilana in the, when we when we came back in, but literally one or two yeah. Uh, yeah. we wouldn't have, we would have had no representati- representation on the podium at all at, at Olympic Games yeah, we it's had Bewell and Herbert uh, but then he also he should have done you know, he also uh, well, I mean the, Sean for a, underachieved yeah because he was a great talent but, but uh, wasn't, wasn't, I mean wasn't that exactly the problem we're talking about where Llewellyn went to a Games he was obviously one of the guys who was tipped to actually medal in those Games and that was Angelo Taylor here right yeah and, and yeah. he but he you know once again if there was a structure and people to actually look after these guys and train them in all aspects of athletics he wouldn't have gone there and shot his mouth off too early and then actually been embarrassed by the guy yeah. uh, and ended up coming away with nothing and yeah. that kind of ended him you know well, I think he got the the bronze, didn't he? I don't know if he got anything. Actually, no, I, got no, he, anything. I think he got actually knocked out in the in the in the semis, yeah, if I'm not mistaken, because yeah. he ran against Angelo Taylor in that uh, in the, one of the heats. Yeah. You know, when you go to the Olympics, um, it's if one you're chance. Really, if, you're, if you're a really good athlete, or you go to a top meeting, you always, you should always. If you really, when the chips are down, you should always do much better. Yeah, yeah. Not the other way around. Yeah. And it's, no, it's no good saying I don't know. These seem to these guys always say so easily, and so it's just sort of trips off their tongue. You know that I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and I'm going to be this, and I'm going to be that. I was almost embarrassed to say that because of because of the concern that I might not do, might not do it. Yeah. And I thought, yeah. well, let let me show what I can do on the track or whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. exactly. All right, just going through some uh, history. I, I still can't find that um, that guy's name. Paul, we're trying to. Uh, I think of one of the hundred meter sprinters. Um, around the Erich Esmond time and I've actually just been going through South African champions over the years he was a black guy but he n- I see he never won the SA champs no I, n- I know who you mean oh. but I don't know his it's name it's not Sakilian Zamanzi yes. is it? Sakilian oh, Zamanzi exactly. yeah, there okay, we go cool. thank you very much Tom. There, there, was, was, there was another guy Walter there was somebody a, there was an Ungobeni a Peter yeah, Ungobeni. Yeah, Ungobeni actually oh, was okay, he, is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was a champion in uh, I saw his name somewhere. I was looking at Paul Nash ran a 9.4 and in, in that's, 66 that's, that's juniors yeah that's 100 yards and yeah. then a 9.2 in 67 yeah that is unbelievable uh, running under 21 in the 220 yards 20.7 in 1966 and then obviously 1969 you, re- you won the uh, 100 meters South African championships in 10.1 yeah and then you got the double that year as well there's names like Dickie Broberg uh, is there March obviously yeah. in yeah. The, uh, I have to say that some of the tracks that Paul ran on were with cinders and uh, had he had a chance I would imagine to train on Tartan and Rabco mm. yeah I <laughs> ran in fact you're, you're right uh, yeah. uh, I actually only ran on Tartan once in my life yeah exactly well, yeah. Well, and yeah. um, well there's no doubt it a, makes a big yeah. big, oh, huge, yeah. a big advantage yeah, absolutely uh, I just see there's another name here that popped in Vessel Westhuizen three time yeah. champion back to back and uh, in hundreds and he won uh, six 200s back to back dominated in uh, in those years some really uh, yeah, big names that we remember here guys it's been awesome catching up with you Paul thanks very much for taking a bit of time out uh, to chat to us today and nice to talk to you both and you keep well cheers, Look after cheers. Yourself. Paul, cheers Paul. So much, Paul. thank you okay. bye bye there bye. we go the legendary Paul Nash uh, Danny Malone there's another one yeah, he Lovely. was a great three, and Dickie three time 800 uh, winner so he came after you after you won it in yeah, yeah. 73, 73 yeah. Donny Milan yeah. uh, and Fanny Fonsale there we go yeah. Titus Mama Bola 10,000 meters absolutely yeah. and 5,000 as yeah, well yeah. Uh, won a few of those he, some names are Johan Free what yeah, a dominant well. force in the 1500 and we had old Matthews Mozzara too yeah. yeah. Matthews well. Lopenfall yes. Matthews, yeah. Matthews Tamani Matthews Tamani wow good. Some great names. No, no, uh, hopefully we will get our act together because there's a lot of talent. You know, we, we, training at altitude here also, mm. we, we live in a paradise for training. Yes. Uh, and the fact that the whole world comes to train at Potchestrum. Yeah. And, mm. and they were walking away with medals and mm. we said, don't worry, we'll see you in Brazil. You yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing, that there are these people uh, that, that are here. I mean, uh, Maria Matola. Spending yeah, a lot yeah. of time there working with Cast, exactly. and apparently she was uh, a little irate about the way she ran yeah, that. I, uh, I just that can't race. understand that whole. Uh, yeah. and, and I can't believe she didn't want to win because she didn't want mm. to attract attention. That's 
it's, it's rubbish. Yeah. It's rubbish, yeah. And then obviously Jan Zelezny, I mean, he spent a lot of time yeah. and has spent a lot of time yeah. in South Africa, but obviously yeah. he had one of his, uh, his Czech Republic country women that was taking part against Sunet. So yeah. I think he, he was more <laughs> pat- on, Sunet. patriotic than yeah. helping Sunet out to uh, <laughs> to win that event. March, it's lucky to see yeah. you again, man. All Cheers. the best. You're looking very well. Darren, and, uh, yeah. Thanks for thanks coming for in and visiting us. Today.